Welcome back. This is part five of the ECG Axis tutorial. We've already covered how to discover your frontal plane, QRS axis, and I even gave you the easy uh, quadrant method uh, for discovering the, the QRS axis on the EKG. In the last part, in part four, we did that. So now we're going to do part five and talk about the precordial axis. So we've already done all this stuff over here. Okay, um, the precordial axis. You separate your leads, you have six precordial leads, your V leads, everybody knows that's how we get a 12 lead EKG. And over here you have your, your right leads, or your right ventricular leads, or your right precordial leads, and over here is your left-sided precordial leads. All of these are the right, all of these are the left, okay? And basically, from your right to your left, you should go from mostly negative QRS complex to a mostly positive QRS complex. You should have almost no R wave in V1. You should have a little bit of one, but it, it should be very, very small, maybe one or two millimeters. And in, in E6, you should have almost no uh, S wave, no negative deflection. So that would be normal. And then normally you transition uh, between uh, V2 and V4. So V2 should be mostly negative, and V4 should hopefully be uh, just a little bit more positive than negative. Maybe it'll be biphasic, but it should certainly be a little bit more positive than negative. And there's things that can cause that deviation. And we've already paid attention to this over here, all the things that can deviate the axis, uh, the frontal plane axis. Now let's talk about the things that can deviate the precordial axis. And we call it the, the R wave progression or transition. So an early transition, let's say if you, you got an uh, a mostly positive QRS complex before uh, V2, maybe in V1 or V2, uh, then it could be caused by one of these things. You'll notice that some of these are concerning, such as a posterior wall MI. So a posterior wall MI can cause early R wave progression because it's basically uh, the reciprocal Q wave that you're seeing. If you see a, a tall R wave in V1 or V2, that could be a posterior Q wave. You've got to flip uh, the QRS complex upside down in your head, or do a posterior 12 EKG. RVH can cause uh, early R wave progression. RVH, you got to think of RVH as like backwards LVH. So instead of having very deep S waves in V1, V2 with RVH, you'd have very tall R waves and very deep S waves in V5 and V6. Right bundle branch block we know uh, can present with a couple patterns, but you know, for instance, this RSR prime pattern is common with right bundle branch block, and, and it gives us a, a tall R wave in V1, so that would be early R wave progression. And WPW, WPW can also cause early R wave progression. For late transition or late R wave progression, anterior wall MI, put that on top of the list. Our monitors are very sensitive for that, and if you have late R wave progression on your 12 ED kg, sometimes your monitor will say uh, anterior infarct age undetermined. That's a common thing it'll say, uh, because of the late R wave progression. So anterior MIs uh, certainly cause a rotation of the precordial axis. LVH, LVH uh, we know causes deep S waves in V1, V2, tall R waves in V5 and V6 generally, uh, but, but it can actually rotate that axis and cause late R wave progression. A left anterior fascicular block, left bundle branch block looks a lot like LVH uh, does, but it's wide. So you get the deep S, uh, S waves in V1 and V2 in your septal leads, and in, the, in your low lateral leads, V5 and V6, you'll get tall R waves. Uh, lung disease can certainly cause late R wave progression, or it could be just a normal variant. When everything else is kind of ruled out, you call it a normal variant. So this helps some people to understand the terminology, and if you read some books, it'll call it a clockwise rotation of the precordial axis or counterclockwise rotation of the precordial axis. Just imagine your V leads uh, where they would be numerically on a clock. So if this was a clock, this would be 12 o'clock and then 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, so on and so forth. And normal, uh, the normal transition we said is right about here. Okay, normally you go from a mostly negative QRS complex okay, uh, to a mostly positive QRS complex right about there. Okay, so that would be your, your normal transition. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, um, if you were to transition earlier than that, if you were to transition up here between V1 and V2, they would call that counterclockwise rotation of the precordial axis. 
And subsequently, if you were to transition late, as you would with maybe an anterior wall MI, they call that clockwise rotation of the precordial axis. Not super important to remember that. Uh, just if you're reading 12 lead books and you see that terminology, now you kind of understand what they're talking about. So here's an example of normal R wave progression. We see that we're mostly uh, negative in V1, mostly positive in V6, and the transition occurs uh, somewhere between V2 and V4. Okay, so V2 is mostly negative, V4 is mostly positive. That's normal uh, R wave progression. And we're not paying attention to these limb leads for, for this discussion. Okay, and then early R wave progression, uh, you see here, this is a, a right bundle branch block, and we said that that's on the list of differentials for early R wave progression. Okay, so don't pay attention to limb leads. Look at V1. Right off the bat, you get a, a pretty tall R wave in V1, and that's never normal. Uh, V1 should be almost all negative. So that tall R wave in V1 tells us we have early R wave progression. And if we went down our list of differentials, we'd find right bundle branch block. And we see that this EKG, we have, you know, a wide QRS. It's a supraventricular rhythm because we have P waves. And we have these S waves. Uh, I didn't even circle it. S waves in V1 and in V6. And if you're, if you're not familiar with, you know, this bundle branch blocks uh, stuff and how to identify bundle branch blocks. Watch the videos that I've done on that. I, I have a quick two-part tutorial on bundle branch blocks that kind of explains why we also look at leads 1 and V6 when we're identifying bundle branch blocks. Here's an example of late R-wave progression. This is from uh, uh, anterior wall infarct. I mean, it's pretty obvious here, right? We, we know how to identify this major ST elevation. Uh, and you have pretty much QS waves in the right precordial leads. And V4, maybe it's equiphasic, it's rather small, okay? But it should be mostly positive. So this is starting to rotate the axis to, you know, to the left. And, and we're getting this late R wave progression. That's very common with anterior wall infarcts. So here's our, our uh, list of differentials again. And we see that last one was a late R wave progression. Anterior wall MI is on there. That, one before that was a right bundle branch block, and certainly that was an early transition. Uh, and you have to think about this list. I don't expect you to memorize the list, but if you do this enough uh, and you start looking at EKGs, especially online on your, on your free time, and looking at the EKGs and using a list like this for differentials, and I'm going to start using these lists with the case reviews that we do regularly for the ECG case reviews, uh, you're going to start to memorize some of these things. For instance, I don't need to think about this at all when I see early transition uh, on a 12 EKG, because these are kind of in, in, you know, embedded into my brain. I think posterior MI, RVH, right bundle, or WPW for early R wave progression, because it's never normal to see that. Um, and you know, the, the most common things on here are going to be stuck in your brain when you're, when you're looking at the axis, the ECG axis. And, and that's it for the precordial axis uh, portion of this lesson. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. It's very easy. It's much easier than doing the, the frontal plane axis because you're really just looking at when the QRS complex becomes more positive or if it does or if it stays more negative. Uh, and you're going to see that normally it always will be between V2 and V4. It'll kind of transition. But certain pathologies will cause uh, rotation of the precordial axis. So we're going to use everything we've learned so far and do some practice EKGs in the next uh, lesson. And I hope you've enjoyed the discussion so far and you're kind of using this with your EKG interpretation. I'll see you next time.